Eight o'clock. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I was just sitting here. I thought I pushed the button a minute earlier because I thought those guys were going to be finished in a second. So it looks like two ninja are taking this thing down. What are they doing? Part of the renovation of the of the restaurant across the street. They've gutted the inside, ripped all the chairs and tables out. I think they're building new counters, new walls, everything. Not sure what it's going to become. It looks like the old sign is now coming down, the old awning. Maybe the whole thing's coming down, or, uh, or they're going to just replace the awning itself with a new pattern. I don't know. The entrance at the left, before to the left of the awning, that's the hotel. What you're looking at there is a hotel, and it has a little atrium at, at the entrance there. So the large door to the very left of the screen, that's the entrance to the hotel. And this restaurant, which is on the first floor going down, when you go into it, you step downstairs to go in. That's the coffee shop, which has been the, the morning service for the restaurant, for, for the hotel. No idea what it's going to become. I can't talk to those guys. They're busy working on stuff. You don't chat with them. What's going to go in here? It, this is a place that flooded, eh? and when we came in here 10 years ago that summer, there was a flood on this street, and the atrium to the hotel and that coffee shop, they flooded. And we have video for it, I think, now and then we keep showing it once in a while. And what you see there, just below the red awning, those, uh, those wooden panels, looks like they're leaning against the glass. What that is, they put that up yesterday. It's a sticky sheet, fake wood grain, and they've covered the bottom parts of the window with this fake wood grain. I don't know why. Anyway, lots of action out there today, but we have work to do, so let's get to our side of it. We'll leave it in one corner, of course. If you see something, while we're in the stream today, if you see something specifically interesting going on over there, let me know, and we can maybe pop it up again for a few minutes. But uh, whatever. Uh, another show and tell for later, not for today. Okay, today's work. We are going to finish off exactly where I left off the other day. I was trying, we were finishing, we were fixing this block. I had put a piece of wood in, and I was trying to... Uh, do it smooth and my knife was too dull. So we'll start today. We'll sharpen the knife, then we'll finish this repair. Flatten it off, smooth it, cut the uh, proper design in. That won't take all that long. The next job we've got, I've got two jobs waiting for me that should have been done yesterday. There's a bunch of new prints. They were trying to mail them yesterday, but they haven't been trimmed yet. And the staff that was here were inexperienced staff and they didn't dare touch this without my uh, without my cooperation, so they had to leave it. So I'll be trimming these this morning so that they can post them. These are going to Patreon supporters. And then in whatever's left of the time this morning, I will start work on removing the chitty on the great waves that we opened the other day because orders are waiting for them. Now, Ayano san opened up the mailing list. 55 people have bought their prints and they are now waiting for them. So today, my absolute priority, pull the chitty off these, get them to the back room, and the girls will then get them packed and out of here. Maybe about a quarter of them will go in today's mail, the rest of them will go tomorrow's mail. We want to get it done before the weekend. So that's my schedule. Also, show and tell. We, we're still waiting on the third book of that set that we received a few weeks ago, but something better came in last night that we just have to show. There's no room on the desk. I will. It's over there, leaning up, uh, blocking half the wall over there. We'll deal with it when we get to it. But we have a fabulous, fabulous, a fabulous <laughs> show, show and tell today. Paper is out. Yes, people are asking. I'm sorry. There's paper out for three printers this morning. Ayumi-san is working on a batch of Hanami cats. Ishikawa-san is working on her first attempt to do a large Mitsugiri band print. It's the Akinomiya Jima from Koitsu. And Dei-chan is doing test printing on the Kyoto Journey print for January, February, March, April. Yeah, the April Kyoto Journey print, the blocks are here. They've arrived from Kawasaki and Kobe. 
and she is going to be doing test printing yesterday and today. She may already have done a bunch yesterday. I haven't seen it yet. The next print in the Kyoto journey. We've gone indoors this time. Jed went indoors. Okay, simple sharpening first. This is, it's simple, but uh, we're sharpening the kentonomi, and it's a straight deal. There's one straight bevel and one flat backside. That's all we have. So the only challenge is to keep it, is to keep it at a straight angle instead of rocking your hand as you go. So I'm going to do that by keeping my hand on the ground. Okay, but I will need to do the back side, so what do I need here? I need a piece of wood. Great waves, get out of the way safely, please. Sakurada. Edo restaurant. I don't know that. I'm sorry. Is this something new? I've never heard of that place. Sakurada serving only Edo period food. I hope it was well refrigerated. chisel here this is not broken or chipped in any way simply the edge is a little dull so there's no uh, we didn't need to go to the rough stone this is a 1000 grit stone quite even. I'm missing a bit on that corner. Also, I'm running my finger here. This, it's running on the wood here to keep me, to keep me at an angle. I've got my little finger as a guide here on the table. At the pool today, I was uh, kind of lost, you know. The lady who swims in the same lane as me, you know, I, what do I be calling her, my pace car, she hasn't been there for a few days now. Maybe she's, um, whatever, I hope she hasn't quit, but she's got something else to do, or she's not well, or I don't know. But I am lost. I don't know how fast to go. My strokes are all funny. I really, really get lost. 
you don't realize how much you rely on having a guide there, you know. It's, she is so steady and so regular. So today, without her there, I did my swimming. I thought I was doing okay, thought I did a normal job. But when I got out to the shower room, looked at the clock, it was three minutes later than normal. So it seems I had been, uh, you know, really, really sluggish and slow. Three minutes. I just can't tell. This is a metal sharpening stone. It's a, they're very common these days. I don't know what they're actually called. Diamond, diamond, uh, diamond plates? I don't really know. They're everywhere. They're extremely efficient. They work very, very well. I no longer use the traditional stones for the rough and medium. I use traditional stones now only for the finishing, which you'll see in a moment. Is this uh, something I shouldn't be doing because we're, you know, preserving old traditions, etc., etc., etc.? I really don't think this makes any difference to the woodblock prints. The main attraction of these stones is that they are always perfectly flat, unless you've dropped it or damaged it. These normal stones we use, it's difficult to keep them flat. The maintenance is very difficult. And these things are always absolutely perfectly flat. That's it. We've got the shape of our chisel back now. You can see the, the light. It's still scratchy. You can see small scratches. We've got one more step to go on the finishing stone. And for that, still, I use an old, uh, the old natural method. I don't know why. No reason. If I switch over to these stones, I should just switch over altogether. I don't know what grit this is. This is really, really very, very fine. I don't know a number. If it were in a, a numbered system, it would be, I don't know, 4,000, 5,000, something like that. I really, really don't know. And this one is a natural stone. And by itself, if we didn't use this nagara, by itself it would do nothing. It's, it's so hard, it's like a slab of marble or something. And if I just rubbed a tool on it, it would just slide back and forth. And it's the mud here from that nagara stone, which, so I'm told, is doing the sharpening. It's the fine powder of that mud rubbing back and forth across the smooth surface. So they tell me. We don't need a lot of pressure here either. Let's have a look. I think that will do us. This is not scary sharp, it's just normally sharp. It should slice off that wood now very nicely. No, we don't use a leather strop in the Japanese tradition, no. There, there could be, once you've finished this way, this way, this way, this way, because I went back on the flat back, there's really no burr to speak of on the blade. <coughs> but with, our, with the, the carving knives we use, I wouldn't leave it at this stage. If this was one of the carving knives, what I would do now is the, the back of the stone, the back of the... The back of the blade would go on that fine stone. We would lift it up a fraction, 
and then rub it on the stone once, twice. And that would remove that last little bit of burr. That's the stropping that the Western people use. The back goes on a leather strop to take off that burr. We use the stone backside, lift it up, and maybe one or perhaps two light passes. I'm not going to do that today because I want that edge to be the fine natural edge. But we do it all the time with the main knife. Someone is saying lime wood and basswood. Yes, we carve on it. No, no, no. We've never, never, never carved on basswood here. Never. Don't know who's passing this. Never. I think you know, over in America, Matt Brown, that's his wood of choice, I believe, or it was when I was uh, in contact with him many years ago. My knowledge of lime wood and basswood is it's uh, fibrous, it's soft, it just doesn't print nicely, it doesn't carve nicely. Box would be used, yes. Someone's saying, has my hair gotten long? Whatever, I guess it's time to get out to Omi. I don't know. There's no time for that right now. This actually, last few days and this week, we are kind of in a bit of a, a, bit of a chaotic situation here. We have two members in hospital right now. I mentioned this before, but today, yeah, today's surgery day. Aoyama-san, my partner in crime here, he uh, has had an accident. And uh, his finger was reattached last weekend, and today is the nerves and stuff. They're trying to put it all back together. So he is uh, out for a while. And the other employee, uh, neither of these were work-related injuries. They were both at home. One of our shop ladies spilled some hot liquid on herself, and uh, they're talking about a skin graft. And Aoyama-san has hit himself with a power tool. So uh, we're sort of dealing with both of these things. So two very serious injuries. The, the prognosis looks good for both of them. We don't know about Aung hand, how much will come back. We don't know, but uh, whatever. Today is the surgery. So. And the lady who, who scalded herself, burned herself, uh, she will come back. Uh, she, you know, her Hollywood career is over, but uh, she'll be okay. And the staff here has been great. Everybody's been visiting her and cheering her on, and I went out there to see her. Okay, you see what we're doing? We're just simply getting this, the flat side of that, not the flat side of the blade, but the bevel side of the blade can run along here, and when it detects the slight bump, it slices it off. Now, I'm not going to take it all the way down with the chisel, because it would be too much, too much chance to damage the surface around it. We may have it, that may be it, you know. Maybe a tiny bit more here. I think the other day we were starting this and somebody said, why don't you use sandpaper? We can't take any chance of damaging the surrounding areas. Of course not. I think that's it for the chisel. Now we'll do the rest, get it down with the same tool we used a minute ago, the Nagara stone, which has a pretty flat back. And here we go. It's slightly abrasive, so it will do to pull down any high spots here. Ooh, feels good.
yeah, you can see the, the black pigment's coming off. We are flat. As flat as it needs to be. Now, carving. We need a sample. Oh, also, I spoke to Kubota-san yesterday. He's moved on to his next job now, of course. And while we were chatting about that, he called me to chat about the colors on the new job that he's doing. And now that a week has passed and this is, quote, fixed, I told him, yeah, it's all fixed. We're good to go. It's all up and running. No problem. Don't worry about it. So he says, oh, good, good, good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. So this is my chance. Kubota-san, no, no. Can you, like, actually, what happened? It was so unusual. I've never seen a damage like that before. Like, what, what actually happened? And whatever, he didn't say I was drunk at the time, <laughs> but it sure seems like he'd been cleaning up. He said he'd taken it to the sink and washed it, cleaned it off, normal, and then back towards his bench. <clears throat> so he hadn't dropped it at the sink, as I had sort of heard on a first story. He'd been to the sink and had washed it. And he, he's laughing yesterday when he told me this. Once he'd heard that it was all fixed, he's, he, he can talk about his bit better. He'd come back to his bench and he was wrapping them up. Now, you know the deal. You've seen it. We've got those newspaper. We wrap it up in newspaper. And he said he dropped it. And it hit, he says, it hit a metal ruler that was on his bench. So the fact that we had that single, you know, like, like, like a metal ruler, whatever. But a metal ruler, you know, could have made that one if you had maybe hammered it in. <laughs> he says he dropped it. So that's as far as I go. I said, ah, so this guy, okay, yeah, it is, it is. No, no problem. Don't worry, don't worry. And again, he offered to pay, and I'm like, doesn't matter, relax, 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 you know. <laughs> so, I tell you, he could, he could do anything and get away with it, because he's so important to us. And plus, also, he is such a nice guy. There's not a, a bad bone or, or an insensitive thing or whatever. He's just the world's warmest, most comfortable, nicest guy. And I, I can't imagine what he could have, what he would have to do before I could possibly get upset with him. There's just no way, you know. Not to mention the selfish aspect. He's so important to us, you know, so. Okay, okay, okay. How are we going to recover? I think we can just recreate this to show. That part of it's easy. We need we need the steps. They just go across. That's easy. But there's a second leg in there. Let's see. The leg we're seeing here is the lower leg. So what's missing is the higher leg. So we have to try and draw a kind of a leg here. Okay, from the bottom leg, there's one bar, two bars, then this thing comes up like that. And there's a gap between the two legs. There's two legs and a gap in the middle, okay. All right, I think I got this.
well, there's no specific problem here. This is, remember, this is a shin hunger print. Eh? And all, all these lines, for example, the lines on this stairwell, staircase, they're not sharp and straight and ruler sharp, straight. That's not the kind of design of this kind of print. These prints are all brushed fairly loosely, uh, you know, any, any lines, even the lines of the, of the uh, architectural elements are rough. It's just the style of shin hunger. You can see them. The wiggly, 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 wiggly. That's part of the style here. So it's for me now, this is really, really, really easy. All I have to do at this point is just take the left and right. And just, you know, make sure I don't do it too straight. Just follow the wheel for this part. So I've got a great deal of leeway here. Nobody ever, ever, ever looking at this would be able to, to see that that was an inserted piece, you know. If it was all uh, mathematically straight architectural stuff, then I would have to be much more careful with it. So if he had, uh, you know, been thinking about damaging one of our blocks, this is probably the, the, the best one from my point of view that he could have done this sort of thing on because it's so forgiving. You know? Then we have the hole still there in the original leg. Now we need a gap between the two legs, which is very, very thin. Actually, I'm not even sure there's a gap there in the key block, you know. There's a gap on the blue, on the blue. I think there's no, car there's no gap in the key block, just the two legs. I'll leave that, I think. small triangular gap like we've written here let's take out this gap two legs, I'm going to just leave it black. The gap here you're seeing is a gap on the blue block. I don't think there's a gap on the black block. And there's the original gap on the longer leg. That's the longer leg here and that's the original gap on the longer leg. So I'm going to leave that. Then we have to go up top and take off the top. What have we got? Going from this side we have a mountain and a flat spot and a mountain. Mountain of so it's here, so we have to cut that mountain shape down into a valley and just cut it off. And that 
is it? I see it's showing negative positive anyway to me. If we look at it this way. There you go. There's glue residue around the outside too. That'll come off. Next time we print it, whoever prints it next. It'll get washed off as they print it, it's okay. It looks wrong here, the angle of the light and shadow. It looks like the ups are down and the downs are up, but uh, it's okay. Done, done, done. I was making a test print. I don't have tools here to do that. I've got my Baron. What have I got? Can I... I've got my cleaning brush, but that's not a pigment brush. Mm -hmm. Print with water, I can't. I don't want to make my brush dirty here. Let's see. Test paint, test paint, test paint. I don't have my tools. I don't have any pigment here. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see. It's showing darker, which means it may still be a bit proud. See, it's a bit darker than the wood around it. It could be because it's a bit proud still. No, I don't think so. Or it could be because it's a different the wood. I don't know, it's on the side of the wood, wood grain. Black pigment, I don't know anything black. Also see the split. See it? You can still see the split line. We're done. Okay. Oop. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Which job next? Straight to the great waves. Trim that other print. Let's just get busy on the great waves. What time is it? Yeah, 34. Let's get busy on the great waves. Okay. I had a look through these things yesterday and most of them look really, really nice. This batch of paper that we used for this group of great waves really seems to have not too much chitty in it. There is chitty in there, but not as much as, uh, as I had been afraid of. And what we need here is a wood block. That won't do. This is a bit small, but it'll do. What I need is a wood block with a flat surface. I need an in tray 
and an out tray. And we're going to go through these things one by one. There's going to be stuff that is easy for me to take off. There's going to be stuff that I can't take off, that I will just leave. And there's going to be stuff in between. And do we have to do this? Yes, we have to do this. Because if we don't, we've learned now, people, after waiting so long for their waves, they're inspecting them microscopically. And any little small dots or tweaks or whatever, they... Well, they complain, I can't say complain, people say, Dave, I got my great wave and uh, there's this thing here, there's a mark here, and is this okay? Did you miss this maybe, you know? And then we have to talk about sending it back and sending it out and customs problems and this and that. So we get stuff like this. Let me find one here and zoom in, just a minute. Let me show you what we're, what's involved here. Some of the stuff will be shitty paper defects and some of the stuff will be a little bit problem left over by the printer. This first one I'm po po going to poke out now. Can you see the small line in front of my chisel? I don't know if we can see these. And what this is, this is a brush hair. This is actually the printer. And this is so small that she probably didn't see it with her naked eye. This is a little brush hair that broke off the brush as she was brushing the pigment back and forth. There it is, look, you can see it if I lift it off here. Can you see it? <laughs> Gone, done, easy. If they were all that easy, we would be sailing. There'd be no problem. The other one here is actually chitty. And we have here also chitty. That's a brush hair. Yeah, look at this. That's a brush hair. And off it comes easily because that's on top of the paper surface. And this one, oh my God, look at that. We're lucky. All three here, all three of the visible defects on this print were brush hairs. I'll chat with her about this actually because maybe then she now has a brush that is uh, getting a bit old and is coming apart. Or what is it, perhaps now that I think about it, what it might be is that she, one of her brushes needed maintenance. So before doing this job, she took the brush on the shark skin, worked it over, worked it over, worked it over till it was soft, and then maybe didn't wash it quite as well as it could have been washed. So little bits of brush hair came out. They fall on the wood, you're pressing them with the baron on the back, they get embedded in the front of the paper, and there they are. And I think when she checked the prints herself, she's looking for, you know, printing defects or problems, and she didn't see those. So that was an easy one to start with. If they're all like that, then Dave's going to be a very, very happy camper today. Let's see how she goes. Where it will get more interesting for you is when we find a piece of chitty embedded just below the surface of the paper. And then we'll do an actual surgery. You'll see. I will find one in a minute. I'll explain it when I get to it. We also have stuff like this, which is not in any way repairable by me at this point. It might be difficult to see this. Let's try Horizontal. What we've got, it doesn't show me visibly. 
Here, it'll show better from the back. Here. What it is, it's a, a clump of mulberry fibers. It's not really bark, it's not the chitty per se, it's a clump of mulberry fibers. And it would have been completely invisible to the paper maker. He just would have made his sheet. And when she made her print, the paper there doesn't take the same impression on the front. And we can now see on the front, it looks like a, a tuck, a crease. There's nothing I can do about it whatsoever. It gets much more visible when you see it in the light. There, you can see it there. See it now? There you are. This one I'm going to let go. And if somebody complains about this, I will just have to tell them the exact truth. I'm sorry, we have things like this in most sheets. There's just, that's what the paper is like these days, and I cannot do anything about this. If it was a, a bijinga, a beautiful woman picture or something, and this was in her face on the cheek, then absolutely that would have to be a reject. To have this here up in the distant end of that sky, there's nothing I can do about it. And it depends how you, when you turn it, look at this, you really can't see it with a different light. This also is on top, which is going to make it very easy. It's when they're embedded in the paper that it's more difficult. <laughs> Someone's saying, have emails been sent out? Yes, I am Sun sent out the first batch of emails. I know orders and payments have been flooding in. She will keep repeating and repeating because not everybody she sends an email to does want the print this time around. I don't know the percentage. It's well over half the people do want it, but it's not 100% of the people who put their name on the list do want it at this point. So we've got 55 good prints, we think, all in all. Maybe that will chew through about 70 or, or 80 spaces on the waiting list because there will be maybe 25 or 30 people there who decide not to pick it up. They put their name on the list so, so long ago that uh, they've changed their mind now. Maybe they lost their job or, or it was an impulse, impulse thing. So we've got 55 prints. It'll be more than 55 people on the list. This also, this one and the last one, I've used the word chitty for them, but they're not chitty, they're dirt. This is the paper maker not keeping his workshop clean enough. It's not a question of bark removal, it's just a question of uh, hygiene. They're part of, we've talked about this many, many, many times. The, the paper maker we use, Iwano-san, they are living national treasure, and they are thus uh, legally constrained in structural changes to their workshop. They can't actually modernize their workshop. I think they could keep it a lot cleaner, but what they've got is it's all wood and wooden beams and wooden cross beams. And it's not a thatched roof, but it's an ancient, ancient, ancient roof. And it's full of dust and plants and bugs. And it's a, it's a building is God knows how many years old, well over a hundred years old, I'm sure. And it's insanely difficult to keep clean, you know. And because there's so much dust and stuff, every time a truck goes down the road, it, it shakes everything very little bit. And these this little dust particles cascade down into the vat where they're making paper. And I've really, really, really yelled at them over the years about this. And they have tried to help. In fact, I think I showed you in one of the videos I took last year when I went there. They have stapled up some plastic above the vat to try and catch some of the, the, the dust and crap that floats down. So they've tried to stop the, the area just directly above the vat, but the room itself is just, it's absolutely filthy, absolutely filthy. It's what you get when you buy on to being a living national treasure, you know.
This one is actually chili. This is white bark, a little piece of it embedded in the paper. Again, this is on the top surface, so I can just slice it off. It's not deep inside the paper. It should come off. There it is. So far today, we are getting lucky with this. As I said, though, you know, this batch, when I looked at it the other day, it seems that this batch is not really hidoi. It's not awful. Mm, the soy sauce. So people make soy sauce or miso or whatever. And when you see some of those old workshops, the vats full of this stuff, they look grotesque you know okay we got one here that is going to be a, a touch and go call let's see if I can zoom in try and explain what's happening here this one I think I won't be able to do anything about we have here let me rotate it so you can see it we have some white bark embedded in the paper it's much more visible on the back side now, no big deal, if it's just on the back side, we wouldn't see it. But unfortunately, when you look at it from the front, people are going to be mounting these things in a frame. There it is. Look at that. You can see it. Look at that. See it there? That's inside the paper. There's two of them. There's another one nearby. These are pieces of bark inside the paper. Can I get them out? without damaging the top surface because they are clearly visible from the front. Not in the light you're seeing right now, but they're absolutely clearly visible from the front. Fuck this. If I try and get it out and tear the paper, then there's $150 down the drain. If I leave it and send it and the person doesn't notice, we're safe. If I leave it and send it and the person says, Dave, we have a problem with this. I don't think I can get these out. I can, but it would leave a visible scar in two places. So this is going to go into the second group. And here's what we do with this. It's a beautiful print. Absolutely a beautiful print. Everything else about it is perfect. There's just two tiny bits of bark in there. It would be criminal not to put this into the market, but I can't send it to somebody who's going to open it up after a two-year wait. So this is going to go into the group of prints, and next week it's going to be in the shop. Someone's going to wander in the shop. I see you've got a great wave. They're going to see it, and the staff, there will be a mark on the back, on the price tag on the back, it will say, please check with staff about the paper damage. And the staff will point it out to him, and that person will say, ah, okay, no, I don't want this. Or they will say, okay. Someone's asking, fly fish, have I tried cutting a tiny piece out and using mending paper fibers? I have. In fact, for, the, for going back how many years ago, five, six, seven years going back, I did that with all these things. Two problems. One problem is that sometimes it works really, really well and the repair is absolutely invisible. Sometimes it's not. And the other problem is, it's fine, but it will take me for each one like an hour or an hour and a half or two hours. And there is an absolute limit as to how much time you can spend on this stuff. If it was a million dollar copy of the Great Wave that was going to go to Sotheby's, you can invest a long time fixing it. If it's not, you can't. So this one, as I said, this is going to go into the shop group. And yeah, some people who haven't gone through the waiting list will end up walking into the shop and getting a print. So I'm going to slide it in my pile here right now, upside down, so that I can put it into the group when I'm sorting them out. Good question. Someone says, isn't it worth the effort to check for the bark before printing? You know, the thing is, there's no sheets that don't have this. You know, that's, it's a normal, it's good. check for the bark, hold each one up to the light, and there we are. And what she does, that's what she does actually. I send the paper to her with no registration marks cut on it. 
and she holds everyone up to the light along with a normal great wave. And she turns them this way or turns them that way to see. And there will be many prints in this group that have huge bark defects, but they turn up to be in the blue here where they're invisible because she has turned the paper upside down and chosen the best face to make no bark defects in the open sky. So step one, we do that. But checking each one and saying, nope, reject, nope, reject, no, that's okay. There won't be any that are okay because there's no paper that we get these days that don't have these marks in them. It's all, I know, there's, it's all fuzzy and vague, you know. It just really isn't clear. This is the one I'm looking at. The one I just passed right now. If I were in a different mood, or maybe if you were sitting here, you'd say, geez, I'd take that, Dave. It's okay. But my problem is we can't send it out to people when there are visible defects. Because we've talked this thing up now so much over the past couple of years. Everybody, justifiably, they expect a perfect print. And we can't deliver perfection. But I've sort of, I've, I've talked about this so much, I've promised perfection and we can't deliver that. So this has become a major, major cross for us to bear. Well, someone's saying the flaws add character to handmade product. We know, we know, we know. And of course, you know, and uh, X years from now, 100 years from now, none of this will matter at all. It could have a gash in the front and 100 years from now, nobody will care because it will be a glorious antique. Oh, that guy who made those videos 100 years ago. Oh my God, look what I found. But it doesn't change the situation right now. We tell it before, Toyota can't sell cars with a scratch on the door. And Mokohankan can't sell prints that have large visible blobs in them. But I'm pretty happy. This batch looks really, really, really good. We've done this job sometimes when every one of these 60 sheets is an oh my God moment. I can't do anything about this. So I'm, today I am not complaining at all. I'm very, very happy so far. We'll see how it goes when we get down this pile. No, we haven't promised perfection. I know part of it is there's, there's a, another company here in Tokyo. Well, lots of companies here in Tokyo selling prints. A while back, we started our idea of doing popular culture prints. You know, we did our still ongoing process of making parody prints of video games. Once we got that up and running, other publishers really jumped on the bandwagon and uh, started to publish similar prints, not with uh, Nintendo games, but with... Uh, other stuff, rock and roll characters and, and, and Doraemon and things like that. And they are, are busy publishing those things. They're, they're carved by uh, uh, one of the older carvers in the Kumiai here, the guild, and they're printed. And from Mokohankan standards, these prints are not really made very well. And maybe because the publishers think that the prints are all going to kids, young people, who don't know what good prints are, the prints are very, very, very carelessly made. I don't have a picture to show you right now. We've, we've had this conversation before. And the registration is poor. Registration is sometimes grotesquely off like this. And they have a big thing on their website, on their order page. There's a big notice in red type in Japanese. It says, please understand, something like this, I'm paraphrasing. Please understand, these are handmade objects with the old traditional techniques. They are not perfect. So if you see blah, 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 please understand, this just helps you give you a warm handmade feeling. And when we saw that, we've got a copy of it upstairs in our printer's room, so the printers can refer to this now and then. For us to say, ignore the defects because it's handmade and that just shows you that it's handmade. For us, that's...
We screwed up, so excuse us because we're not machines. I mean, come on, give me a break. Here's one that seems totally clean. I don't see any problems with this one. Sometimes, you know, there's a, there's a, the front is clean. This is actually very common. The front is clean. If I hold it up to the light, I can see a couple of specks. And what happens is, even though it's not visible from the front, people are going to be framing it and matting it against a, a, a light mat, a white mat. And when they do that, the little black dots that are on the back of the print, they show through to the front. So even though there's not a dot on the front, and if you hold it at a certain way against the light, you're okay, it can show the dot when it's matted. Anyway, 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 sorry about that. Didn't really want to talk about that same conversation, but this is a job I have to do today because this is Thursday and we have today and tomorrow to get these things in the post before the weekend. So I'm sorry, I have no choice. I have to do this job today. What's uh, happening outside? Can we take a peek outside for a second? Just a moment. Oh, they took the... Okay, so it looks like maybe they're leaving the, the awning up. They took down the red one, and perhaps they're going to be putting up, you know, a new one with a different color and different lettering. I don't know. Who knows? We will find out. This is a nice patch. I am happy, you know. I am happy, I'm happy. Oh, here's one. Ooh, 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 ooh. What have we got here? Can you see it? Let's see if we can use it. Can we see? What's happened here? I don't quite recognize what we're looking at. Got it? Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, what we have here, I wish he hadn't done this. What we have here is a, a little tiny hole in the front of the print. And what must have happened, I've told her not to do this, what must have happened, there must have been a dot here. Now, it wouldn't have been chitty paper making, it would have been pigment dot. In other words, a printer defect. She must have got it. Oh, it's Ayano-san already. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Come in, come in. How you doing? I'm okay. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Good walk from the station? Yeah. Yep. We're going through these great waves, and uh, the, the batch has very, very, very few defects, you know. There's oh, very glad. little chitty. I'm finding like there's bits of broken brush in there, and uh, stuff on the top, dirt from Iwano-san's workshop. But, but actual chitty, so far we've only had one, two, or three. Yay. I'm really, yeah, so, <laughs> it's just lucky it's the <laughs> way it's supposed to be, so. <laughs> well, if it's like a paper defect, then, then it's, uh, I'm uh, a little lucky that we don't have yeah. many. So far, I've only, I've only done the first 10 or so, and so far I haven't spoiled anything yet. There's one that has uh, so much uh, white bark in it that we'll have to put it in the shop because I can't do surgery without damaging it more. So, uh, But so far we have a good... I see you've sent the emails and orders are pouring in now. So, so this is it, so this is it. So I have to kind of wait patiently yep. because the prints are still here. Okay, well my deadline, as I said, it's today, and I might not be able to finish them all today, but today and tomorrow, so we can mail them all before the weekend, right? So, 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 so. so, so. And we're posting from here, not sending to Ome. I'm not sure what's the best way. Okay, you know, we we'll can see how it goes. from Asakusa if someone can help me, you know, yep. pack the pack. Yep, of course, of course, of course. So, that's me. I'm not sure. Today we have full staff. Tomorrow we're short to show in the shop again. We're short. Do this call? No. Thursday we're okay. I think there's three in the shop today. Okay. But tomorrow there's only two. So I think I'll have to be, be working down here on Friday. So, okay. you know. so this guy. Ah. Everybody's on guard. I mean, it's new. It's all, uh, good morning. I'm Sam. I'm Sam. I'm Sam. I'm Sam. I'm Sam. I'm Sam. She shows up and Dave doesn't stop talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How are things, ma'am? <laughs> uh, it's Thursday. I, I spent like uh, two hours, three hours with you yesterday, just talking to each yeah, other. So yeah, yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. has changed since then. So, <laughs> actually, yesterday, so we worked together in the back room there on a Watanabe-san, the other lady. She's usually off on Wednesdays. So, uh, and I, I finished, I didn't finish, but I had sort of 
I had a thing I wanted to do yesterday and I sort of did the big part of it. So I was feeling a little bit at, at loose. So I went back to bother Ayama side in her room next door. No, you, so. came, you came to me with, the, with one little question. <laughs> and an hour later, I'm still there yeah. bothering you. Know. The other thing too is her room, they have a heater in her room. I don't in mine. There's, there's an air conditioner, but I never use it. It's crazy to turn on a big air conditioner for one person. And it was cold yesterday. It was cold. So I go back to her room to ask her a question. And it's, to it's toasty room. warm in there. <laughs> <It's> so, <laughs> And the coffee machine is right next to her room that's there. True, so, so, true. so I did bug you a little bit too much tomorrow. Yeah, that's no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. That's your job today. So far, good? looking good. So. And if the the batch of um, what's that? KJ prints. Uh, if they show up, yes, of I course, that it. will be a top priority. I didn't mention that. There's also the other job. I will, I will finish. Uh, I will slice these Patreon prints oh, so, so that they can go. And they're, they're all waiting for them at the back. Everything's mm -hmm. ready and waiting. And as soon as I finish trimming them, they will go. So I'll okay. do that once the stream's over. Then I'll continue trimming this. Okay. If Kubota Sans prints show up, I will instantly so do my job on that. So the, these are my priorities Hi. on this desk today. So, so. Hi. 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 Yeah, I'm going to get started, I think. All right. Yeah, thank Hi. you, thank you, thank you. So, so, so. I tried not to bother her yesterday, you know, it's, you know, everybody's got their work to do. We need communication, we need meetings, we need to talk about some things. And it's partly because of the two hospitalizations that are going on, she and I had to do some coordination about that. So I'm, I'm struggling a little bit to know how much to avoid, you know, I, I've got something I need to ask her. I walk down the hall and she's there and she's busy, you know. And if I ask her something, it's the same thing. It drives me crazy when the people are bugging me, I'm trying to get something done. And here I am, I'm in the same position, bugging her, you know. So it's difficult, it's difficult to know how much to talk and how much to leave people alone. Anyway, what we were saying here, it turns out that what she, how to sound the printer here, what she's done, I, I ask her not to do this. You can see here, there's no black mark, but you can see some slight damage to the surface of the paper. And what she has done, almost certainly, is there would have been maybe a blue spot or a color spot there. In other words, pigment. Clearly a printer's mistake. Now, what she, she knows is if she has made a mistake, if the registration's off, that print goes in the reject pile and she doesn't get paid for it. The normal way for a professional printer doing a professional job is we send X sheets of paper, the ones that are good, ready to sell, they get paid for. The ones that are not good, they don't get paid for. That's at the professional top level, and she is a top gun like Kubota-san. Down here at the other level, when we've got people working in our shop here, working upstairs here, it doesn't work that way. We, if we, we did that, we would be too strict. It would be no good. You can't pay them. Sometimes they do a test, test run. One print or two prints is okay, the other 30 are no good. We said, go, go away, we're not going to pay you. We can't do that. And that's where our Patreon and the trainee premium come in. We use that money to pay for those people from the time they've spent to do this when all the prints are not perfect. So two things happen. We do pay for bad copies at the working level and training level, but the top guns do not expect that and they don't get paid. So what she has done is, there must have been a blue pigment dot here, and she thinks that will go into Dave's reject pile. So to try and save the day here, she has taken her little knife and chuk, 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 she has scraped away the front surface of this thing. And I've told her many times, don't do this, trust me. I will pay you because I can do this under my microscope much more cleanly than you can do it. And if it can't be cleaned away cleanly, then that's fair enough, you don't get paid. But she still does this, maybe part for embarrassment, she doesn't want to send me prints with blue dots or whatever, I don't know. So she has done the excavation here and it's kind of more clumsy than I would to have done. So my decision now is, is this bad enough to reject it? If the customer has a microscope, they can look at this and see somebody has excavated the top surface of this paper. I think we're okay. I saw it because I see things like this, but I don't think... Do you see it there? I think this will go through. 
She's getting better at it. So busted trying to pull a fast one on Dave, whatever, whatever. She, again, she and Kabuta-san, those two people, they can basically do anything they want. They know how important they are to us. They know that if they quit or something, I would be totally, absolutely screwed. Now, they're really nice people. They're not, there's no hostility in any of this, but they know I need them very, 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 very much. The lady who did this batch, her name is on the prints. Her name is Kawaii Chiharu. Her name goes on with pride. There's no, no embarrassment here. We've got three people's names on these prints. It says, E design, Katsuka Hokusai. It then says, Horiburu, Horiburu Debido, Hori meaning carving. And at the bottom it then says, Suri, the kanji for printing, and it's her name, Kawaii Chiharu. Absolutely, the names go on with pride here. And my God, has she done an amazing job on this printing. Just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Our block set, our specific Great Wave block set, is a difficult block set to print. Every other publisher in town, Adachi or the Kumiai, whatever, they have their own Great Wave. And most of them, I have to say, honestly speaking, are easier to print. If you watched our video series about this, you'll realize that I got in trouble and I went down some dead ends when I was making this. And I ended up having to make a compromise which should never have been made. Our version of the Great Wave has a key block carved on a solid plank. It's called in Japanese, muku ita. It's not the plywood type stuff that you've seen us using these days. It was a solid plank piece of cherry. Now that's okay, in the old days that's all that was used. And the reason I used it is because I had a rock hard solid plank to do. But I didn't have solid wood for the color blocks. And I'm, the, the mistake here is by carving the key block on solid wood and the color blocks on plywood, you have a situation where you have different rates of expansion and contraction. Namely, the key block, once you put wet pigment on it and start printing, slowly, bit by bit by bit, starts to expand. If you imagine doing the same thing with this block. If this was a solid piece of wood, once you start printing on it with water, it starts to expand. Doesn't do it this way, because tree wood doesn't stretch vertically, but it stretches horizontally. And of course, when we come to the color blocks, because they're plywood, they don't expand. Now this is the absolute number one rule you never break. And when I was breaking it back then, I knew I was going to get in trouble. I knew our printers would be paying the price for years to come. But I had no choice. It was the only piece of what I had. Our Kickstarter was late. Things were running badly. I'd been videoed doing this. I was totally, totally screwed. So we did it. And the result now is that to print this, she prints the key block as it is. And she stops at 60. I only give her 60 sheets because that's when the expansion is just starting to take off. If we printed 200, you'd have 50 or so sheets the same. And then they would all be different one by one by one by one by one as it expanded. So she stops at 60. And then we are insanely lucky in that there is a white path here across this print. So when she's printing this dark blue, because the key block has expanded, but the color block hasn't, she prints the dark blue twice. She prints just the bottom part first, and then she moves with her knife, she moves the registration marks a little bit down and prints the top blue. And all the blues, the medium blue and the light blue and the dark blue, all have this gap in the design which make it possible to do this. So Hoksai, you didn't know what you were doing when you designed this, but man, oh man, oh man, thank you very much. If this blue had been all the way up with no break, we wouldn't have been able to print it in separate blocks, separate times, and we would have had to go back to the beginning and start all over again. I'm missing questions, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm talking but not reading.
Someone says, this print looks great, did I make it, Dave? <laughs> I did the carving on this, I didn't design it. Hokusai designed it. I did this, the carving on this set of blocks and our carver, Chiharu-san, printed it. There is on YouTube a 17 part, 18 part, a 17 part video series showing the entire process from conception, through tracing, through carving, through test printing, and through uh, other printing, and then later analysis. So if you go to our YouTube channel, somebody can put the link here, it's in there somewhere. There's a ton of video showing this print on the whole process. Someone's asking, have we started carving our second replacement block set yet? We haven't. And as you know, we, we've talked about this now and then, all over the place. This block set is holding up so well, and we are making so few copies from it, that we haven't yet begun the replacement set. John San, the carver who is standing by to do that, is working on the Hokusai series this year, as well as he'll be doing the Eight Views of Cats number five. We have a piece of wood for this standing by, and there will be at some future time a second edition from Mokohankan of the Great Wave. But we don't need it yet. This one is going to do for quite a while. Okay, here we go. This is the first internal surgery. I used my knife to make two cuts. I opened a flap and I pulled out the dirt. It wasn't shitty, it was dirt that was inside. We're now going to take a tiny smidgen of, of paste, the same paste that we use for printing these things, close that flap, and we are done. One black spot removed. There's another one nearby, actually, I see it. Should we do a second one? I don't think so. There's the one I just did, and it looks different now because it's wet from the glue. So the wet spot on the sheets are there. And this one, I think it's too light. I think I'll leave this one. No, nothing I can do with that. Yeah, it looks like a dark spot because it's wet. As soon as it dries, it disappears. How's our time? We're getting closer to show and tell. Okay, maybe let me just do one more and let's bail to do show and tell because show and tell today is going to be a, a, a little bit difficult for me because of the size of the prints. Happy with the batch. It's a good batch of paper, you know. It's, well, it's not a good batch of paper, but it's uh, very few defects compared to what we've seen recently, actually. The thing about this is, you know, it's impossible for me to, to phone Iwano-san and say, hey, this batch of paper is really, really cool, because the paper I'm using now, he made two years ago. We order tons of paper from him every year, and it's a first-in, what do you call it? A first-in, first-out system. We get, you know, thousands of sheets of paper from him each year, but we don't use it fresh off the boat. It goes into our stock, it sits here for a couple of years, and then out it comes. So the paper that you're seeing here for these prints would have been made a year, year and a half, perhaps two years ago, perhaps a year and a half ago. I don't know exactly. I'd have to look at the documentation. We, we of course, we track our paper lot numbers and stuff like that. Okay, enough talk. Let me, what I'm going to do is this. I have to take away the flask here. I will also rotate the camera so you can see me open this thing uh, over there. Ah, oh, don't move. 
It's Kabuto-san's paper. Block. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God! They're here. They're here. They're here. I'm gonna send an email to Ayano-san. Just one sec. One sec. One sec. One sec. Etone. Ayano Hai prints Kubota-san's prints are here. Bingo. This is the second batch of prints for March. And she needs these. She needs these. For, these are subscription prints that need to be shipped out of here on the 11th. She's going to be so happy to hear that news. Okay, now. Uh, okay, lights. Okay, I've got my mic on me, so that part's going to be okay. Okay, let's turn the camera temporarily round. That boom is our show and tell prints. And look at the size of that package. Knife, knife, my kingdom for a knife. And we also, while I'm at it, let's get the flask out of the way. can't see you guys, but you can see me. Let's get in here. Okay, nothing to recycle, so let's just cut. Okay, that'll get rolled up. We'll use that again. Prince. <laughs> Where are we going to put them? Oish, 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 oish. Let's get the light out of the way too. Okay. Okay. Okay, these are Ukiyo-e reproductions. Let me sh sh shrink down the other stuff too. You don't need my face that big. That camera. Get my tools out of the way. Oops, great waves are in the way. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, 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 okay. I have no idea. It's a set. Actually, I can't read this. It's quite a scribble. We have something on ukiyo-e. Meisaku shu. Me, meisaku something hin. Shu. Something I can't read. Ukiyo-e, you know, Meisaku is famous pictures, something I can't read, product, collection. We'll get in there. Now, are they identified? They're not identified.
they are a set of double O-band reproductions. You, you saw the great wave we were doing. That's the normal size for an ukiyo-e print. These prints that we're about to see here now, they're all double-sized reproductions. Double-sized reproductions. I have some of these in our collection already. This is another group that has come to us. Ano Ito is, seems to be the name that's associated with them. It's, it's marked as printing by Ito. Uh, I forget for the moment the company who designed these. And they are really really, really interesting. Our printers upstairs have seen these, and when they think about if they were trying to print these, print, 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 it's a stunning, staggering amount of work. We'll go through a couple of these here. They're just incredibly difficult to make. And where on earth, the wood, to get pieces of wood that would do this. Back in those days, it was possible. You pick up the phone or you just go and visit your wood shop, and there they are. I need, I need 35 pieces this wide, please. Okay, when do you want them by? It would have been insane. This particular one is a bit funny because this is a, a bold, boldlerized version of a pornographic print, an erotic print. The real print by Utamaro, the fisher, the, the fisherwoman lady, you know, she's going to be diving soon with her basket to, to collect abalone. She's an abalone fisher, fisherwoman. And the people who analyze this print will give you two versions of it. She is either dreaming about what could possibly happen to her when she goes under the water, or maybe her friend is under there, this is happening to her now. We don't know. In the real version, this is a rape. The kappa here is between her legs, and in the real version, all parts of his body are visible, and this is a, a stunningly erotic or, quote, pornographic print. This is a bowdlerized version. The other parts of his body or her body are not visible. We just have seaweed carefully placed. And uh, what's the name of the company? Q, Q I, I think, I know our friend here, Nightheart has got it. Is it, is it, it's not K though, it's Q, oh, I don't remember. It'll be in here somewhere. Just, just hang on till we find the label here somewhere. You're close, sir. You're close, but it's not quite right. It's Q, Q, oh, look at the condition of this. We get this now and then, and they're in terrible condition. This one, oh, look at this, it's torn. Somebody has, uh, he must have pulled it off to take his pictures or something. Look at that. Nanda. Again, double the size of what they are. This is mica powder on the back. And the mica powder actually in this series, they come on quite loosely. So you can see where the mica powder has dusted across onto the washi nearby. It's come loose over the years. I want to ask questions. Someone's asking about eight views. Oh, Ken san, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Someone's asking about eight views. Eight views is still alive. The fourth print, the test versions are on my desk upstairs right now. We got a new batch of testing done last week. So please try and hold on. Eight views is coming, although very, very, very slowly. I'm sorry. Print number four, there's tests of it on my desk. Look at this baby. Look at this baby. Now it's good news, bad news. The, the good news is here it is. We have it here. The bad news is those blocks, because of the huge size of these blocks, it's the same thing we were talking about earlier with the expansion and contraction. There's no expansion this way on a wood block, but this huge expansion this way. And look what we've got here. The color blocks, I'm not sure, can you see it? I can't see the screen anymore. The color blocks are no longer registering carefully. 
look, the gray here pops out into the sky. This one comes out here. So the registration has suffered for the size of these blocks. The printer, I'm sure, struggled and struggled and struggled, moving it out, moving it down. Maybe some of the blocks had shrunk. He put them in water to try and expand them. We don't know. It would be a nightmare for a printer. Absolute nightmare. Also to the printing, let's be honest here, the printing is not perfect. There are strong striations from the Baron here. Are they visible? I can't see. Do you see the white lines here? Chup, 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 chup. It's where he took his Baron. First he would have gone smooth, then he would have gone chup, 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 all the way across. And each time he did, it left a mark. His baron must have had one little high spot somewhere on it, and that high spot has left marks right across the surface of the print. This is not the A-team. Well, it's the A-team, but uh, not quite doing as well as they could have done. But they're so cool. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think this, I think we got 10 of them. <laughs> as to why they would do this, your guess is as good as mine. Why? Why go to all this effort, all this trouble, I mean, look at the thing here, it's next to me, look. Incredible, what a mad, magnificent, magnificent piece. Now these days, nothing, you get a good scan of a wood block print, take it to Kinko's and you can print this stuff easily if you're doing it. This is a wood block print. And we had to pay for these. This was not some free auction. It wasn't something that nobody else, uh, nobody else could see. We had to pay for them. Sizing is not very well done on this sheet. I haven't seen this before on these. We've got a stamp here which seems to be indicating edition numbers. Look at this. I haven't seen this. To my knowledge, these were just all open editions. But they've got a blank space here for a number. Nani go. Empty space for a number. And we've got here the carver is Matsuda. And the printer is Ito. I wonder if it's the same Matsuda I knew. I met one of the a carver called Matsuda. Matsuda Torazo. Maybe this might be his father. Because these are old. These are 50s and 60s. And the Matsuda I, I met wasn't that old. So maybe this is his father or somebody not related. I don't know. So I'm saying, were these originally sized? No, these have been scaled up. Absolutely scaled up. The original of this would have been, it's the same series. It's the same series. It would have been this size, exactly. And we're looking at a double. A sheet of paper that normally would be cut in half is double. And this is the same series. Fugak Sanju Doke. This is the original size. We have these in my own collection, uh, so this group that we have received now from Barnaby san she will be putting these at some point into the flea market. Whether she's going to put them only in the shop, whether they will be online, I don't know. They're much more effective in the shop. When you put them online, you show the picture and it just looks like a normal print. You can't tell the, the difference. Oh, look at this. Yes, 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 yes. Look at this one. Okay, have you seen this? Look at this. This is Moronobu. It's the famous Mikai Bijin. Yeah, I've seen that. And look at this. It's, there's, it's not real gold, 
it's on a gold colored. It'll be a bronze powder, I guess, bronze and silver. So I'm saying, are the colors from ink or natural colors? The, the metallics are metal, where there's an actual, it'll be bronze powder on top of this print, maybe some uh, nickel silver as well. The pigments are actual pigments, no problem at all. And this is an imitation of a painting. The original would have been a scroll painting, 1600, 1690, somewhere on there, I don't remember exactly. And this is a woodblock print reproduction from the 1950s or perhaps 60s. And this is one of Japan's most, uh, most famous and iconic works of art. It's Moronobu, Shikawa Moronobu. It's back at the very, very beginning of the thing that developed into ukiyo-e. And the original here wasn't a print, the original was a painting before color printing was invented. Sixteen ninety or something, I don't know, I shouldn't put a number. No. Another one from the Tokaido. We saw the Kambara print, the snow scene. That was from Hiroshige's Tokaido. And here's another one. They didn't do the entire Tokaido, of course. They just did two. They did two of them. Yes, that's the guy, Shikawa Moronobu. Thank you for the link. Good. Thank you. Nicely done, you know, very nice. They're not perfect, given the scale. They're not perfect, but my God. And the, you're doing this gradation at the top. Just for me, looking at this, just I used to sit here quaking in terror if I had to do this. You got the block this big, a massive brush to put the pigment on, a massive brush. You got it ready, then on goes the wet paper, and now <laughs> rub, rub, rub. I, there's no way I am not physically capable, even remotely, of making prints like this. Absolutely not. The men who worked on this would have been big, powerful, heavy men. There's no way that someone like me could do this. I'll take these prints upstairs and show them to the ladies upstairs, and they're just going to, they're just going to throw their hands in the air, you know. Nothing sexist about it. It needs a vast, huge, big amount of work to do this. And it's all got to be done bang, bang at one piece. You can't do a little bit now, a little bit later, a little bit later. You've got to throw the piece of paper on the wood and go for it. You're talking about sumo wrestlers. I don't know if they're all that powerful. They are big and, and they're big, but what you need here is... Uh, a barrel-chested printer, a guy with huge, big shoulders and arms to be able to put the power onto this sheet of paper. It's not a fat person or a big person. You need, a, you know, that, that kind of power. Ball bearing bearing would help, but whatever, you, you still got to get in there. These two, this one and the one we saw earlier, they make a good pair side by side. Absolutely fantastic. Can you see these? This one, look at the size of this. Can you imagine this one and the one I showed you a few minutes ago, side by side. An absolutely stupendous pair. One, two. Someone says, you think AI designed these hands? Sorry guy, this is the 1790s. I think it's, uh, what is it, 1792, 1793, somewhere around there. That Sharak did those. Nothing to do with AI. This is 
all human. <laughs> I think there's one more. Yeah, one more here. Last one. I don't remember what they are. Oh, yeah. I think this is Hokusai also from the 36 views. Yep. This is also iconic. This is also wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Gradation here, gradation here, gradation here. This is cool. One of the most classical Ukiyo-e designs ever. The triangles, the mountain replicated by the guy with the, the fishing. There's a defect here. Look at this. Where would he get red pigment over here? Tanda. Come on, guy, get... Here we are. It's red pigment, and it must be from the block that did this printing, this guy. That's the same color pigment. Discount, discount. I'm not going to try cutting that off. There's no way. Not with an antique print like this. I am not going to play games with it. <coughs> okay, there we are. Good. These are great fun. Great fun, great fun. The other thing about these prints is they come up now and again on auctions. But in the auction, you see the little picture, and it looks just like the same as the normal, normal print. And lots of people miss these auctions because they don't read the fine print, and they don't see that it says 60 centimeters wide. They, you know, they just think it's another common garden reproduction of an ukiyo-e print. But this series, when I see this same group come together, get my bidding out, and away we go. We had to pay for these, you know. We had to pay fairly, fairly heavily because they're so popular. Very good, very good, very good. Okay, there we go. We're over time, I'm sorry, but it was worth taking a look at these. Today's Thursday. I'll be back two more days. The jobs I've got on my desk will must be cleared by then. That box that came from Kubota-san, I have to do the embossing and send those out of here today. They can't wait till Saturday. So I don't know what I'll be doing on Saturday. Something. We will find something to do. Let's pull up our construction camera. What are they doing? Oh, they put up another awning already, did they? What have they done? Have they put up a black awning? Have they replaced it? Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, so they kept the awning machine in place. They've just replaced the fabric of the awning. The truck there is advertising trunk room. Trunk room. It's a trunk room. But what do you call them in the West? A room where you rent the space and you store stuff in it. Okay, hokusoko kana? Kyo hokusoko. No idea how I'm going to pronounce that. Kyo kita soko janai. Anyway, whatever. I don't know how to pronounce that one. Okay, let's get out of here. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a couple more days. See you then. Thanks for watching and bye for now. <laughs> see you soon. Good day.